bad news, folks. Evil does exist. There are people out there that will hurt people for no reason other than enjoyment in doing so. It's just, that's a reality. And I think until that actually happened to you or a family member, it's just not there. It's just not. Now, if you think that this actually exists and the randomness of the attacks that can come from, from evil people or people with evil intent, how does that impact your life and the sense of control that you have over it? Also, it's important to understand that police officers are actually not paid to fight, they're paid to win. So we're not, the, the, you know, our, the way we approach calls, using our tactical advantage and using some of the, some of the tools, that, the defensive tools that we are provided, and using our training, techniques and procedures, um, you know, is, is a best course of action. But if we're speaking uh, sort of mano y mano, like standing there and, and the fight's on type deal, yeah, mixed martial art is absolutely uh, good in, in terms of bridging that gap. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I think denying that is, is fallacy. It just is. You know, I don't believe in motivation. I believe in self-sacrifice. So I don't, you know, do you fall out of it or do you, do you get demotivated? Like for me, those things are sort of peripheral. I, I just take all this and push it aside. I have to go to class. I just go to class and, and that's the end of it. Sometimes I get good classes. Sometimes I get not so good classes. And I show up three hours later, four hours later, six hours later, or so 10 hours later, and it's a different day, right? So is it hard? I suppose it is. There's a lot to learn. It never stops. And it's, it's, if you show up with an ego, it will be real hard because your ego will not sustain your jiu-jitsu training. So, so the idea is, is to have the ability to perform in a, in a wide variety of scenarios and you don't have to be a specialist because we know that life punishes a specialist, especially in policing. Just have the ability to be decent everywhere. For me, um, 
based on my current schedule, I generally will train really early in the morning and I will train, I will have an additional session somewhere in there, generally a, a jiu-jitsu session, generally, because I try to train jiu-jitsu every day if I can. My weight training slash uh, metabolic conditioning or, or high intensity training, it can be CrossFit, it doesn't have to be, it can be other things, but high intensity training or metabolic conditioning, generally four times a week. So I get about four workouts a week of, of metabolic conditioning with a strength bias. Don't give other human beings too much power over you. Don't negate your own self-worth on account of somebody that helped you through something, right? And you can pay back and that's okay and become the inspiration. But again, it is to be taken, it's a fragile balance and it's important and it's critical that we understand that because otherwise what happens is that person has it that much more together than I do. And then we start self-deprecating. And when we start talking to ourselves like this, what does the subconscious mind do? It processes the information and believes it. And once we start believing our own little negative voices on an emotional level, it becomes really, really difficult to overcome those. No big deal, we go the old fashioned way. Healthy fats. Love cooking with coconut oil. It's really good. It makes everything taste like Hawaii, and since we can't go to Hawaii right now, might as well get a taste of it. Having tested a lot of other things, a lot of other diet models, um, in training over the course of the last 20 years, this actually works best for me. I have a protein source every meal. I have some carbs every meal. I have some uh, source of veggies. I will have some fruits generally if I, if I, if I have dessert. I will have some fruits. I, I love those um, Australian, what are they? Australian kiwis or, or golden kiwis. Fantastic fruits. And, uh, and I try to do that every meal. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to remember what I ate or anything like that. So. Look at this, in the marinade of the fish mixed with the coconut oil. Mm. 
work smarter, not harder. Sometimes I forget. You can put a bit of butter on here and you can put oyster sauce and it's amazing. <laughs> so we don't want to play with that. <laughs> Too much. And when I say we, I mean I don't know. <laughs> All right. My man. Watch this. Sable fish. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's an interesting dichotomy because I actually, I actually encourage the public to, to, to hold us accountable and to ask for questions and where's the money going and where's the training and how is the training and how are your officers and for us to open our doors and say, come on in, come for ride alongs, come and see what we do. Like I, I'm actually yearning for this. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the members are, are doing that. Once we have that, what's left is if an incident transpired and it looks the way it looks before judging, just make sure that you have the totality of the circumstances. And oftentimes we don't. We have a 20 second clip that comes on TV and oh my God, this was atrocious. Well, was it? You don't know anything, right? You don't know the pressure that was on the, on the member, on the responding officer in terms of the information that he got or the information that he or she got or didn't get. Uh, you know, eight different car dis description, like three different direction of travel, weapons, no weapons, all kinds of mixed description of the people they're dealing with. Radio comms broken, so they don't know what's going on with, with the current members on scene. Perhaps they hear, you know, the, the, the radio being clicked in and out, and all of a sudden they think, whole, you know, like th these guys are in a fight. And so now they're driving, uh, they, they, they're driving with lights and sirens, which also increases the stress. And now they have to, you know, really pay attention so that they're not hurting the public or themselves. So they can make the call as safe. But there is physiological cost to this. There's a, there's a psychological and a physiological cost to this. Adrenaline, hormones are going up. Adrenaline, you know, goes up. And, 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 and when they get to the call, they open the car door. Maybe they come out a little bit stronger than they would have liked to because they were completely loaded with these different hormones and everything. So, so maybe, maybe, just maybe, that little tackle that for you is excessive might have been justified. It may have not looked that great, but based on the totality of the circumstances, that was taken into account. Police officers are not expected to be perfect, nor are they supposed to be, nor are they expected by the courts to, to measure force with exactitude, because it is extremely difficult to do. So, all I'm asking, or all I would like to see, is for the, the population, when they are getting a media inject, which is often very, very biased, to take that time to say, you know what, I'll reserve judgment on this until we have the totality of the circumstances. Once, you, once the totality of the circumstances or, or the, 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 the IIO is, is finished investigating or the, the findings are out and published, by all means, hold accountable the people that are accountable. So if there is excess, if there is an excessive force or if there is something a wrongdoing, then let's deal with it. And let's be firm in dealing with it. But give us a chance to present the totality of the circumstances. Have fun, you guys. Okay, boys, we'll see you in a bit. See ya. Apparently, it was when somebody cowered and the, the crowd just basically <laughs> yeah. thumbs down. Might as well fight if you're gonna die anyway. I absolutely love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I absolutely love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I, I, I. It's, it's literally taken over my life, and it, it has. Um, it, you know, it's, and I mean that in a good way. I mean it.
This comes over here, your on finger for your legs. No, this, this one is on top. So you come right behind your knee if you can, nice and high. Drive them down, swing the leg over, and then, yes. I am not a person that deflects. I never do. If something goes wrong in my life, it's my fault. It's not everybody else's fault. I'm not trying to look where blame is going and if I don't get that promotion or if I don't get this job or, or if somehow I, I do something, it's always I look inwards first. What have I done? What could have I done to make this better? Deflection being very, very destructive for all parties involved. I think for me, it was all about, I'm going to do absolutely everything that I can so that I'm not the reason why something goes majorly sideways one day during a call response. That'd be for the public that we sworn to protect or for the, my fellow officers that count on me to be there for them. I will not fail for lack of training. I will not fail for lack of reading. I will, not, I will not fail for anything that's in my sphere of influence, which is a lot. So I will give absolutely everything I have. And sometimes you give absolutely everything you have and it just wasn't meant to be. It just happens. There's nothing you can do. There is countless studies and empirical evidence to suggest that a lot of police officers, not all of them, but a, a vast majority of police officers that are hurt or killed on duty were often your community-oriented officers that were very, very uh, confident in their communication skills, that were people person, that cared for people. Those are generally the ones that get hurt or killed. There's a reason for that. Evil does exist, it just does. And it targets empathetic people. It targets the weakest link, okay? So we need to be able to, we need to be able to have empathy to a measured degree. We need to be compassionate, no questions there. We need to guard from overinvestment so that we don't destroy our own well-being and our own family life and our own life, and we can have a productive and long career. But we also need to know when it's time to take some, some action that could be drastic in nature so that we don't get hurt in the process of trying to trust other humans. I also find as, as an organization, not just the RCMP, but police in general in Canada, we are very reluctant in providing sort of some of the gruesome detail or some of the stuff that we deal with. I think it's not serving us well. It's not. I do think that it allows people that have their head in the sand to keep it that way. And I don't mind, as a person, disturbing people a little bit. Shake him off, take the head out of the sand and say, look, this is what happened. Oh my God, yes. Because then it's easier for them to understand some of the complexities and some of the some of this dynamic situation that we deal with and give us a little bit of much needed slack in how we conduct business.
We should never let miscommunication be the root of change. Education should be the first step forward for everyone. The relations that you have with your children, with your family, with the people that you love. Maybe you are the kind of person who spends his time at work, always. And now, you have the opportunity to make the... la de te reconnecter avec tes gens qui t'aiment. Fais ça. Donc, par le temps que, la, que, que ça s'est terminé et que tu retournes au travail, tu vas être amélioré. Sauf peut-être que, peut que, après tout, la restriction a été la meilleure chose qui t'est arrivée.